So any other suggestion? So for function space, a functionality means the following. So you have, um, so you have to define the inner product with of a function f and a function g, which is the interval of m and g. So, um, for a function space, a polynomial means that you take the product of the two functions, you integrate, and, and and this is the inner product. So, so if f g is zero, we say that f is a polynomial to g, right? So, so so basically, for um, for so now we have the following definition for inner product. Product in RE, right? So you have A times B will be A1 times B1 plus A2 times B2 plus AD times BD. Right? Um, I'm not getting the capital F and G and yes. the uh, arrow brackets. Yes, so what does that, that symbolize? Yes, so this is the inner product in ID. Now let us define an inner product for function square. Product for, for two functions. F, X, and G, S. Right? So, so the inner product we define this way. So you have F, G, will be integral from minus infinity to infinity of F, X, G, S, D, X. Right? This is the inner product. Right? So, so, um, so this is the definition. So in ID, you multiply all of the components of the two vectors, and you take the sum. Right? So for functions, this is the same. The idea is the same. You multiply all of the components of M and G, and you take the sum. But the sum for function space will be the integral. Right? Um. So we're talking about uh, the sum of all the vectors that make up a function f. Take the inner product of that, the sum of all the vectors that make up a function g, and if that equals zero. You have a Okay. So what fun are we using f and g as different aspects of the same function here? Or are uh, we I'm going to give you one example. Okay. So, but we, because we are considering on L, so let us restrict this to minus L to L, right? Right, so in RD, so the inner product of 1, 2, 3 times 4, 5, 6 will be, um, example, in R3, right? So let us consider this inner product, I'm going to have 1 plus 4, Two times five plus three plus six, and this is going to be four plus ten plus eighteen, and this is fourteen plus eighteen, and this is thirty-two. So this is the inner product of one, two, three, and four, five, six. Right? So this is the standard one. So if I give you an, uh, a vector one, two, three, and another vector four, five, six. What is the inner product? The inner product will be one, two, three times four, five, six, and I have to multiply all of the components of the vectors and take the sum, right? So this is in R3. So now let us consider the inner product for functions. Inner product for function. For function. So now let us consider two functions. The first one is one. The first one is one, and the second one is x. And those functions are defined on minus L to L. Because uh, we are looking for functions that are on minus L to L. Because as I mentioned here, um, this is periodic, so we just restrict our attention to, to this interval, right? So how do I define the inner product of F and G? The inner product is defined by this guy, 
which is integral from minus L to L, 1 times x and dx. And this is minus L to L of x, dx, right? So I'm going to take the antiderivative of this guy, and it's going to be from minus L to L, right? And this is L squared minus L squared over 2, and this is 0, right? So this is the definition of the inner product of two functions. You just multiply them, you take the interval, and if the interval is 0, then you will say that. So if, if the, uh, the interval is 0, So I'm going to say that f and g are orthogonal. In this case, this is 0. Questions? It's clear? So it's just a definition, right? To summarize, so I explain again this before, before I summarize it. So in R3, the definition of the inner product of two vectors is to multiply all of, the co uh, all, all of the components and you take the sum. In this case, you have 1, 2, 3 times 4, 5, 6. So what you do is you multiply 1 with 4, 2 with 5, 3 with 6, and you get 32. So this is the inner product of the dot product of the two vectors that I mentioned here, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, right? For function space, it's going to be similar. But you're going to replace the sum by the interval. So I have two functions, 1 and x, right? And I consider them on minus L to L because we have uh, doing it from minus L to L, this, this, is, this is the space of 2L for each function, right? So, so what I do is that I multiply F and G, right? Then I integrate from minus L to L, then I have uh, 1 times X, the X, and this is going to give me minus, the integral from minus L to L of X, the X. So the antiderivative of this is X squared over 2. I take the difference between minus L to L, and this gives me zero, right? So if this is zero, I say that they are orthogonal. If they are not zero, nothing happens. They are not orthogonal, right? It's clear. Questions? So definition. So um, for two functions, on minus L to L. So the inner product or the product will be <coughs> the interval from minus L to L, Lx dx. Right? And the notation will be Fg. And and uh, orthogonality So F is orthogonal to G if um, F G is equal to zero or the integral from minus L to L of F X G X the X is zero. Alright? Questions? So basically, this is just a definition. So in order to compute the inner product of two functions, I have a definition. I take the product of two functions, I take the integral, this is the inner product. This is the notation, right? So but for vector, for vector you have what? For vector you have a dot b. But here you have to put this bracket, right? It's just a way to denote it. So the notation will be fg. Now, if this integral is zero, I said that they are orthogonal, right? What just? It's okay. So one uh, important thing with this, uh, which was discovered, uh, which was di discovered by Fourier. So this was done by Fourier, who was a French mathematician in the six, 1960s. 
So, so this is the definition that was given by Fourier in which he defined in the product the functions, this one. And what is found interesting is the following. If you multiply all of the cosinus and sinus function this way, that will be zero. So, so the notation uh, 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 belongs to uh, Fourier's so observation. So if we denote, if we define the inner product, this way, or function, then uh, one sinus of n pi x over L and cosinus of n pi x over L all normal. Right, so this is a, a very um, genius observation of Fourier. So he said that, okay, if you define the inner product this way, you just multiply two functions, you integrate, then one thing, uh, one miracle happens, which is the following. You have one sinus and cosinus becomes orthogonal using this one, right? So let us check to see if it's uh, correct or not. <coughs> so this is, so let us check Fourier observation. So this is what he claimed. So he claimed that, okay, if you define the inner product this way, then all of those functions are orthogonal. This is his claim. So let us check his claim. So let us pick two functions, which is one and sinus. So one, is it orthogonal to sinus, n pi x over L. So in order to see if, if this is, um, if uh, one is orthogonal to sinus, we're gonna multiply them and take the integral, right? So, so one sinus n pi x over L is going to be the integral from minus one to L to L, one times sinus of n pi x over L. So let us check if this is orthogonal. So, so I'm gonna multiply one with sinus and I take the uh, inner product, which is the integral from minus one L to L of one sinus n pi x over L dx. And, and Fourier claim that this, this is zero. Why is this zero? is um, um, going to be the integral from minus L to L of sinus of n pi x over L dx. All right, so, and this gives me minus of cosinus of n pi x over L dividing by n pi over L. And you take the difference between minus L and L, but this is periodic, so this is going to be zero. All right, so he's right. So he defined an inner product. I mean, he, he tried to generalize the idea of uh, the, the d-dimensional vector space to periodic function, and he defined this inner product, which seemed to be a miracle, but, but it works in the sense that if you pick this set, they're orthogonal, right? So you multiply one with sinus to integrate using the definition of Fourier, then you get zero. So let us continue to check his claim. Any questions on this? Why is it uh, divided by n pi over L? Okay, so uh, yes, so this is what we have. So you have the integral of cosinus of, uh, of sinus of ax, dx, right? This is 
going to be minus cos minus of ax over ax. Okay. Other questions? Right, so let us check the second claim. So the second claim is the following. So I'm going to check the uh, one. If it is orthogonal to uh, cosinus. So we're going to use, again, the definition of Fourier, which is invented by him, and we check if one is orthogonal to the function cos right? So how do we check it? Can you sign the microphone, please? So now we're going to define this. Uh, so I'm going to write the, the definition of Fourier over there so that you, you can go back and forth between them. So Fourier definition over here. For inner power of function. Function. Inner power. Two function. So the will be minus L to L fx, gx dx, right? All right, so this is his definition I just wrote there so that we can refer to it. All right, so, so his definition is that for two functions, you multiply them, you integrate them, and this is going to be the inner product. So, but, but the miracle with this is that, okay, if you, you apply this inner product to sinus and cosinus, they are orthogonal, right? So now, let us check if one is orthogonal to cosinus. Alright, so this is going from minus L to L, 1 cosinus of n by x over L dx. Alright? And this is going to be what? Sine dividing by Yes. <coughs> so this is going to give you uh, the integral from minus L to L uh, cosinus of n pi x over l dx and this gives me sinus of n pi x over l over n pi um, from minus l to l and this is going to be zero right so this is another uh, very nice observation of him right okay questions so uh, so now we're going to use his definition and check if the others are orthogonal, right? So we check that one is orthogonal to cosinus, and one is orthogonal to sinus, and we're going to check sinus and cosinus, and sinus and sinus, and cosinus and cosinus, right? So the next thing is sinus of n pi x over L. Is it orthogonal to cosinus of m pi x over L? So, questions, why do we choose N and M here? Because sine and cosine are of different periods in this term. Uh, well, no. Excellent. Yes. Can you sign the bank of the paper? Because the same that we are considering, I'm going to copy it here. So it's 1, cosine of N pi x of L, and sine of N pi x of L. So this is a notation, but the true is the true set is one cosine of pi x of L, sine of pi x of L, cosine of two pi x of L, sine of two pi x of L, cosine of three pi x of L, sine of three pi x of L, and you continue this. Right? So this head is going to be 1 cosinus 
and pi is a well, set as n pi is a well, cosine of 2 pi is a well, set as uh, 2 pi is a well. So what we are ch checking uh, now is, for instance, this guy, right? So this is the cosine and this guy, right? So the n and the m denotes the 2 and 3 here, right? So we are checking in the general form. So n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And m can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right? It's clear. So when I wrote this set, that this set doesn't have only three numbers, uh, three functions. It has a lot of functions because this means that you have one, you want to replace n to be one, you want to replace n to be two, you want to replace n to be three, and here you also replace n to be one, two, three, and, and then you have a lot of functions over there, over there, right? Yes? It doesn't matter, so they're still orthogonal. So if I check here, if, if n is two, m is two, you will see that it's going to be zero, right? Other questions? It's clear. Right, so now let us try to use the, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the set here, and I'm gonna use the definition of Fourier set. Right, so I'm gonna check that this guy is going to be orthogonal with this guy. So again, I'm going to use the definition of Fourier, n pi x over L, and cosine of m pi x over L, right? So then this is going to be integral from minus L to L of sine n pi x over L, cosine of m pi x over L. So now I have to compute this integral. How, how can I compute it? So if you have a, yes, so, but, but we come back to that. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? But later on, I will give you the formula for that. But for this one, for this one, I want to use a, a standard method rather than odd and even function that we have in now. Right. So how do I compute this integral? So there's a formula. What is sinus of x, cosine of y? This is going to be one half of sine of x plus y over two. So let me put it to be capital X, capital Y. Right, so this is going to be x plus y divided by two plus sine of x minus y divided by two. Right? This is the formula that we are going to use. So you have sine uh, of x times cosine of y. It is going to be one half of sinus of x plus y over two, sinus of x minus y over two, right? So I'm gonna apply it here, right? So here I'm gonna have integral from minus L to L of one half of sinus of n pi x over L plus m pi x over L over two plus sinus of n pi x over L minus m pi x over L and I divide this by two, right? So I'm gonna use this formula. I have sinus of capital X times cosinus of capital Y. This is going to be one half of sinus of x plus y over two plus sinus of x minus y over two. So in this case, I'm going to apply a capital X to be this guy and capital Y to be this guy. So
So, so this is x plus y, and this is x minus y, right? Screen questions. Right. So, 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 what is the value of this? Uh, so, maybe before continue, let me uh, let me try to simplify this a little bit. So here I have n pi x of l and m pi x of l, right? So I can put x uh, pi x of l to be the common factor. And what is going on is integral of minus n, l to l of one half of sinus of n plus m pi x of l, right? Divided by 2l right? plus sinus of n minus m pi x over 2l dx right because n pi x over l plus m pi x over l is uh, divided by 2 is m plus n pi x over 2l and the other one is the same so you have n pi x over l minus m pi x over l divided by 2 and this is m minus m pi x over 2l. Right? So this is a little bit complicated, but uh, but it's understandable, right? So we check it one, and after that we use it. We don't we don't have to check it again. Again, so um, so I try to present everything here, but all of this can be found in the notes, right? So this is page uh, page eighteen in the note and uh, uh, thirteen. So this is in the note. So so let let's check it once and then we use it. Um, so I explain again. I have this inner product defined by Fourier, which is one of the biggest discovery in the in in, in analysis, right? So we define this inner product to be the integral, uh, the, the, the integral of the product of the two function. And and now he look into the set of all of the sinus bonus cosinus function and we see, he will see that they are orthogonal. So now what we have to check here is sinus is orthogonal to cosinus, right? So what we do is we apply Fourier's um, uh, agreement. We have sinus times cosinus will be the integral from minus L to L of the product of the two function. So in this case, we have sinus times cosinus. So we're gonna use this formula. So sinus times cosinus will be one half of sinus of the sum average. And then uh, sinus of the uh, difference, and then you divide by two. So here, I'm gonna apply capital X to be n pi x of L and capital Y to be m pi x of L, right? Um, so I'm gonna get Sinus of n times x of l, so this is um, adding with this one. So I have n times x of l plus m times x of l, and I divide that by two, which is the formula over here. I have n times x of l minus m times x of l, and divide by two. This is the formula over here, right? So I get this formula. So here I do a simplification because this guy plus this guy. This guy plus this guy is going to be m plus n pi x over l. And this is going to be n pi x over l minus m pi x over l divided by 2. And this is, uh, I'm going to replace this by this, so I'm going to replace it here. So what we have to do is to compute this integral. So what is it? Yes. Um, you could pull out the one half and mm -hmm. then just have two separate sine integrals and then you just solve it just like you did the first Yes. So here you have sinus and sinus. We do it like the one that we did before. <coughs> um, so I'm gonna put one half outside, so I have one half. I'm going to go from minus L to L of sinus of N plus M x over 2L dx and then for the next term I'm going to have one half the integral from minus L to L sinus of n minus n pi x over 2L dx right so 
now how can I compute this interval? Can you sign the back of the So this is going to give me one half uh, cosine s. I have minus n plus m pi x over 2l dividing by n plus m pi x over 2l. And this is going to from minus l to l. And the other one is one half of minus cosine s of n minus m pi x over 2l. And this is n minus m pi over 2l. And I take difference between minus l, l, right? And again, this is similar to the previous uh, step. So I have 0 plus 0. And I get 0. All right? Questions? It's clear? Okay. Um, so, so far, we checked that, okay, the function 1 is orthogonal to all of the function cosinus and sinus. And we checked that the function cosinus is orthogonal to function sinus, right? We, uh, we're going to have to check uh, cosinus and, um, and sinus, but uh, the property is uh, the same, and uh, is it long? So, so I recommend that you read in the, uh, in this. But, I mean, we just, uh, we just, um, we just read one, we understand that, and we use it, right? Any questions so far? This is a lot of computation, and in this class, we're going to see a lot of intervals. Yes? On the first term here that you wrote, in the denominator, should there be an x? There is an x, yeah. Uh, no, sorry, the okay. next line down, this is over to the left. This is x. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? Right? So, so we're going to check the others, cosinus, and cosinus, and sinus, and sinus, but this is going to be the same. Right? So, conclusion. Conclusion. So by Fourier new definition of inner product of uh, inner product of the inner product uh, of uh, 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 functions of two functions. All the vectors in the same <coughs> one cosine of n pi x over l and sine of n pi x over l and orthogonal. Right? So this is a very nice observation and this is one of the uh, one of the biggest discovery in mathematics. So, you define the inner product of two functions this way, and then all of the cosinus and sinus function they are they are orthogonal, right? Questions? It's clear. Right. So, so let us try to understand how to use it. So again, uh, this has, had, has a name. This is called a Fourier basis. This um, same. Let's say one cosine of n pi x over l, sine of n pi x over l, which is 
1 cosinus of pi x over L, sinus of pi x over L, cosinus of 2 pi x over L, sinus of 2 pi x over L. It's called the free radius. So this end is called the Fourier basis. Again, I put the number n to indicate that, okay, you have to consider cosinus. You have to replace n to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in this sense, right? So the number n. So, so with this in the product, so uh, so this set of sinus and cosinus is called the Fourier basis. So the number n means that you have to replace n by one, two, three, four, five, right? So you have one cosinus of pi x over l, sinus of pi x over l, cosinus two pi x over l, sinus two pi x over l. Right. So, uh, so from the previous. Uh, uh, lectures, we know that if you have a, an orthogonal basis, then you can express everything in terms of this uh, orthogonal basis, right? So this is going to be the same here. So, so if f is a 2L periodic function, we can express Zero times one plus the B is all we the cosinus A N A one um cosinus of pi x of L plus B one of sinus of pi x of L plus A two of cosinus of two pi x of L plus B two of sinus of 2 pi x over L plus um, A3 of cosinus of 3 pi x over L plus B3 of sinus of 3 pi x over L and you continue with this expansion, right? So, similar to the previous does the expansion go on for infinity or up until you hit an L for the subscript? You go up, go on to infinity. All right. So this is infinite sum. This is infinite sum. Infinite sum. Right? So this is the difference between uh, the d-dimensional case and the case of periodic function is that here you have an infinite sum. Why? Because you can put this n to be 1,000, uh, 10,000, and you can continue this expansion. Okay. Questions? It's okay. Right. So, um, so now, point is that, okay, how can we compute all of those coefficients? And if I want to compute A1, how can I compute A1? So, um, just by multiplying by the basis of A0 to the cosine of pi x over L. Can you stand at the back of the page, please? Right, so, you, you are, you're going to use the same trick as before. Right. So, how can we compute A1? So, so, we know what? We know 1 and cosine of. Uh, pi x over L is zero, right? Because this one is orthogonal to this one. Meaning that you integrate, you take the product of them, 
and each wave is going to be zero. Right? So this is going to be zero. Cos s of s of l is zero. This is from minus l to l. Right? And and this one is orthogonal to the sinus. So sinus of pi s of l, cos s of pi s of l. is also zero. And this is also zero, right? So you multiply this cosinus with anything else. You take the inner product, then it's going to be zero. Um, so so what we do is that um, so I'm gonna write another thing so that you see it. Of L, cosine S of pi S of L is also zero, right? So what you do is you multiply F with this function, right? Right. So now you have what you have F. You multiply with cosine S of I S of L. Right, so you multiply F with cos and S I S of L. So what do you get? You get um, I0, 1, cos and S of I S of L plus D1, sin S of I S of L and cos and S of I S of L. Uh, D1. Uh, so this is A1. D1, yes. So let me, this is A1. This is cosinus. And then this is D1. Sinus. I X over L. Cosinus of I X over L. And then you have A2. Cosinus of 2 pi X over L. So you multiply this with cosinus, right? So you multiply f with cosinus, you multiply 1 with cosinus, you multiply uh, cosinus with cosinus, you multiply b1 sinus pi x over l with cosinus pi x over l, right? And here it is the same, you multiply cosinus, this one is here, so you multiply cosinus 2 pi x over l with cosinus pi x over l, right? And then b2. For the B2, this is going to be sinus multiplied with cosinus pi x over L. All right? So everything will be zero. So this is zero. This is zero because they are hollow. All right? So this is what uh, Fourier observed. And this is going to be zero. And this is going to be zero. All right? It's clear? So now the left over is just this one. So left over is just that one, meaning that you have f cosinus of pi x over l is equal to a1 cosinus of pi x over l cosinus of pi x over l. Right? Because everything else that's zero. So now I can compute A1. So A1 will be inner product of F cosinus of pi x over L divided by cosinus cosinus. So this, by definition, will be the integral from minus L to L of Fx cosinus of pi x over L dx dividing by the integral from minus L to L of cosine S of pi x of L cosine S of pi x of L dx. Alright? And this is the formula for A1. 
only one. It's good. So I explain again, right? So this is complicated. I understand that, and and I, I so if uh, so so please feel free to stop me at any point that you don't understand. But this is uh, so so uh, by three, we can express express f like a one times one plus a one cosinus b one sinus. So this one is going to with the index one here, right? And then have a two cosinus two pi x of l, b two sinus two pi x of l, right? And then a three cosinus three pi x of l, b three uh, sinus three pi x of l, and you continue this expansion. So yes. Uh, just for solving for a naught, would that just be the uh, the y intercept? So if you want to to, to find a naught, you multiply with one, right? right? And the other ones will be zero. Uh, but let us try to compute a one, right? So, so we know that okay, if you use this basis, you're gonna be able to express this in terms of this basis, this one, right? So how do you express this function f in terms of this basis? So I got gonna multiply f with cosinus, which is the the vector that I have here. So in order to compute i1, I multiply with this guy, right? Um, I multiply the function f with this guy. So I multiply f with this guy. When I multiply f with this guy, which means that I have to multiply each component with this guy. So I have to multiply one with this guy. I have to multiply sinus with this guy. I'm gonna multiply cosinus two pi x of l with this guy, and sinus two pi x of l with this guy. Fortunately, because of the orthogonality, all of those in the product will be zero. They will be disappear, right? So the left over will be only this guy. A one cosinus pi x of l cosinus pi x of l, right? So A one will be f cosinus pi x of l divided by cosinus pi x of l cosinus pi x of l. And this inner product is, is defined to be minus the integral from minus L to L of F cosinus of pi x of L dx. And this inner product is going to be the integral from minus L to L of cosinus pi x of L cosinus pi x of L dx. Right? Questions? I'm still on the A naught, the times the times the one thing. If we use the same formula and multiply everything by one, then we'll end up right. To me, it just looks like we'd end up dividing by zero. So let, let, let's just try to do it, right? So now I want to compute with A1. I, I compute a co coefficient A1, right? So this is one we want to see A, 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 A0, A0, right? So I want to compute A0. What I do is I multiply F with one. So when I multiply F with one, what do I get? I get this one, right? So I'm gonna get this. One. So you multiply one with one, this is not zero. So a vector is not orthogonal with itself. So you multiply the second guy with one. This is going to be zero. In the previous case, because you multiply cosinus with itself, this is not zero. Now this is zero. This is going to be zero. Right? Right? So so you multiply one with this guy. And now you multiply one with this guy. So this is going to be zero because they are common. Now you multiply one with this guy. So it's going to be one here. Of course, this is going to be zero. Now you multiply uh, one with this guy. This is also zero. Right? So everything else will be zero except one times one. So now I have f in the product with one. Here I have a zero. One one. So I have a zero. So here it should be one. And here it should be one one. So here I have one, one, one. And here I have one. And here this is the integral of one times one, this is one, right? And so this is simple because this is two L. So this gives me the integral of minus L to L of 
square x dx divided by 12. This is formula. Um, this is formula. Uh, the formula that we have here on page uh, 12. Alright? So I explain again. So, so now, suppose that I want to compute x0, right? So what I do is I multiply the function f with 1 and I integrate. I, mean, uh, I take the inner product of f with uh, the vector 1. So when I do that, I have f1 is equal to, a, uh, is equal to a0, 1, 1, cosinus m by x1, right? So this is here, big one, sinus 1. So this is here, um, cosinus 1, which is here, sinus 1, so this is here, right? So the function 1, is orthogonal to all of the sinus and cosinus function. So this is going to be zero, this is going to be zero, this is going to be zero, and this is going to be zero. So I'm going to have f1 is equal to a11, which is the only term which is not zero. So I have f1 is a11. So a0 is f1 divided by 1, 1. So f1 is uh, the integral from minus l to l of f times 1 dx. And, and 1, 1 here is going to be 1 integral from minus L to L dx, and we have a formula. It's clear? Questions? So this is exactly the same with what we have, what we have in the, the three-dimensional or uh, d-dimensional case. For instance, in the previous uh, uh, example, we have what? We have V1 uh, is V. Suppose that the dimension is 3, V times E1 plus V2 times E2 plus V3 times E3. So how do you compute V1? V1 will be V times E1 dividing by E1 times E1, right? So this is V1. And here this is the same. So A0 will be F1 dividing, dividing, dividing by 1, 1, right? And uh, so, so now, can you guess the formula for any A, A3? So how can, can you guess the formula for A3? F of x uh, times the, you say 3. <laughs> A3 will cosine be... Cosine 3 pi x over L. So it's going to be F cosine of 3 pi x over L dividing by cosine s of 3 pi x over L. Three pi x away. All right. Um, so we. So now, uh, suppose that I want to compute b two. What is b two? F sine two pi x over l over right. sine two pi x over l. So we multiply with this guy, right? So f b two will be f sine s of two pi x away l dividing by sine s of 2 pi x over l, sine s of 2 pi x over l. All right, so next time, we're going to try to do more exercises to understand the meaning of uh, all of these uh, relations. Thank you very much.